Hey everybody, welcome to another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Panu. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing? It's great to meet you, and it's always exciting to talk to a brand new MVP. When did you actually earn your MVP? How long ago? Uh, it was on July, or it was late, let's say August, because there were some issues on the MVP awards this so year. Like a, a whole month, a month and a yeah, half. Yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah, whole so. month, so this is familiar for me. Yes, I, you're you're old timer already. I know. So, yeah. uh, well, you've I, we'll get to it. Like some of the questions that I'm sure you've already been asked by people. But for folks that don't know you, so who you are, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Well, my name is Panu Oksala. I'm located here in Finland, Jyväskylä. I'm a CTO and partner at a company called Edify. Uh, I have been in software industry since what? Let's say 2009, I think that was my first job in the .NET company. And all that time I have been involved in a Microsoft ecosystem. So doing .NET and Azure and Azure DevOps and that sort of things. So my background is in development and I still try to write code as much as possible. But as my current role is CTO, it gets a little bit harder and harder all the time because people try to push me away from the code. Yeah. Well, that, that, uh, that always happens. It's a, it's, it's difficult and for folks to, especially in, I mean, how big is your company? I should say first. Uh, 25. Yeah. I was going to say like smaller organizations, yeah. like where it's more owner operator led, you can't separate, like you're doing, when you're doing sales and marketing and promotion, then you're not, delivering uh you know and building and if you're building and and delivering then you're not doing the sales and filling the pipeline so it's uh and it's it's easy to uh so explaining this to my wife uh also <laughs> yeah. in, as an independent working with small companies she's like what are you doing what are we doing this week and i said well i've got like four things that i'm working on that i didn't get time to during the week and uh you know it's just that's just part mm. of the reality of a small business so. Yeah, 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 that is true. And that's why I, when everyone asks me what is my title or what I'm doing, I usually say that I'm a janitor in the company because I do all of sort of things like customer help and, and coding and selling and everything. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's, it's very cool. And so you, so you are a, an MVP in developer technology. So what, what's kind of your focus? What are your primary uh, uh, you know, technology areas? What are you passionate about right now? Yeah, that is a good, good question. Uh, I started earlier on the, well, let's say I started with the .NET, but then I transformed into DevOps. I was very deep into DevOps and Azure DevOps. And after the GitHub, Microsoft acquired the GitHub, of course, there was some rumors that will they transform or move into the GitHub enterprise and Azure DevOps will die or that sort of thing, which is of course not mm -hmm. the true. But, um, on that, I maybe um, switched into other areas like, of course, the AI boomed in the in two, what was 2022, one, one, mm -hmm. two. So I moved that, but all the time the .NET has been the clue behind everything. So I have stayed in the .NET. So that is what I'm blogging about. That's what I'm making videos about. So I would say the .NET is my thing. Very cool. Well, and so what, what are your primary contribution types? Are you more a writer, a video creator? I do a blogging a lot. Uh, I try to write two articles per month. And then I'm answering questions in Stack Overflow and what else? Mm, doing videos and doing some mentoring. I had a few people that were new into the business or new into the IT sector and I helped them to gain the first job. So that is something that I, I love to do. Yeah, that, that's something that we talk a lot about, you know, but, you know, finding new people for the, the, within the community and mentoring and coaching them and develop, helping develop their skills. I mean, that's, I mean, we all do that to some degree, but I mean, there's some people that just go above and beyond 
in that space. And that is mm -hmm. a, that's true. Uh, it, it's, I mean, so important that we're constantly looking for finding, welcoming in, uh, into the community. What was, I always like to understand like the origin story. Like, so, I mean, you've been in the space for a number of years. So how, like what happened to become an MVP? Well, <laughs> it's a hard question. I don't know. MVP hasn't ever been my target. So I haven't ever tried to be an MVP. That's not my goal. My goal is to learn and share what I what I have learned. So sharing and teaching and, and that sort of things. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I have a good friend of mine who is an MVP and he proposed me <laughs> and said that I <laughs> proposed, said that I should maybe be an MVP and he helped me to get through the journey and, and that's the end yeah yeah though that's not that, I mean, hey that that's a good way to do it it's it's uh I, I always like to tell people too is there's nothing wrong with wanting to going after becoming an mvp but it really comes down to like are you changing your behavior to try to get into the program or is it really just uh um clarifying like your contributions uh, you know, getting more organized around that, uh, you know, being aware of what Microsoft looks for. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's more, it's almost like, you know, the reporting is cleaned up versus changing what you go and do. Yeah. One thing that I have maybe do it a little bit more is like um, personal branding. You know, mm -hmm. you, you can, you can buy yourself a domain, you can use same kind of colors and pictures and fonts and build your personal brand and I think that helps you to evolve a little bit on on, on the contributor side because you have a constant and look and feel everywhere so people yeah. will recognize you more often did you struggle with doing that like going in because some people feel like uh, like I'm ringing my own bell I'm uh, you know I'm well, I, I'm self-promoting I was like I don't I don't have time for this I want I need to go focus on what I'm actually doing yeah, yeah, it's super hard, especially when you need to mm, like boost yourself or they'll that you are mm, capable of doing this and you are worth it. So it's a hard trip and you just need to remind yourself that you are worth it and, and it will. There are people who are listening to you and someone will learn new things from you. So it's important to keep doing what you love to do. I had that feedback at multiple companies where I had managers that were saying, uh, yeah, I was like, well, you just need to be more visible in the work that you're doing. I'm like, you know, what, what are you talking about? Like, we're, my team is crushing it. Like, we're getting this stuff done. Like, look at all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, but it's just not visible. And I had a manager tell me, uh, it's like, I go to like the, the director meetings with the VP and like, and nobody's talking about the stuff that you're doing. I said, right. I do all the background stuff. I run the systems that everybody else works on. Like, uh, you know, and so that was difficult for me to then, it's like, well, how do I, without sounding like a jerk, how do I, you know, promote the yeah. stuff that I'm doing? So like, what are your recommendations? Like what, so build a personal brand? Mm, that is one thing. One, another thing is that being consistent. So I try to do two blog posts every month. So mm -hmm. keep your readers like active and keep them on the hook. So if you do blog post every six months or something like that, it's too rare. So you need to have a cycle that is um, frequent enough and keep doing it. That is maybe the second thing. Um, I usually do a lot of different things. So I'm not just doing blogging. I yeah. love to answer questions on Stack Overflow or do videos or attend into podcasts or, or something like that. So. Have a variant in, in your contribution. It's good maybe for your mental health and keep your like learning new things and viral things. How, what's your involvement in the in your local community? Do you do you is that a big part of like your profile? Yeah, free event here in Uvascula where we have approx hundred people coming in. It's about Azure. And well, we haven't had it since the COVID because um, everything went locked here and you couldn't have any meeting, personal meetings or, or events. 
So now I'm just starting to have an, another meetup group here in Uvascula called Azure Uvascula, which is kind of a meetup group because we don't have any here locally about the Azure. We have one for the AVS and um, Agile and software testing and that sort of things, but not for the Azure itself. So that is something that I'm now ramping up because I just love to see people in person. Yeah. It, it's hard. Like we, uh, we still haven't gotten back to our pre COVID numbers for our mm. user group. I mean, we still, we're, we're still doing hybrid. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we definitely get more people showing up online than we do. And I, and I'm guilty of that. Like I'm, we've got ours tomorrow and I'm going to dial it in because I've got meetings right up into it and there's no time to drive up, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it's been, I know difficult on a lot of user groups to kind of get back to those those numbers, find that pattern again. Mm, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, part of it, I think, what makes it difficult too is because so many of us that are doing much more digital work mm. and doing things for the community. Um, so it's like, what? Why do I need to drive to a location? Yeah, there might be free pizza or something, you know, in the evening. But but why am I going to go and do that when I can dial into user groups all over the world? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and watch videos about the recordings and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So for for folks that are interested in, so this is where I was going to get back to you being an old timer now in the MVP program. Mm -hmm. uh, for, sure, for people yeah. that, that reach out to you and ask for recommendations, like what's your guidance for people that uh, maybe are interested in the program? Mm, well, I haven't had anyone <laughs> asking yet, but I think eventually someone will, of course, ask. But uh, well, I don't know. I I haven't really thought about it yet because I haven't been here so <laughs> so long. But oh, if some friend of mine would ask, could I be an MVP? I would of course ask, what kind of contributions you have done, and because that is the main reason or main selling point in all of this. So if you have contributions and they are good enough or they are in good quality, of course I would make it offer about them yeah i've had um i mean i, I i've often uh, shared like get a good friend who's an mvp and an rd now um who uh while he was kind of chasing after trying to you know pursue he like filled out the application and 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 had hadn't received the award and it was it was a couple of years that he was trying to get in and, oh, and mm. as they do is like you know if you don't get in they don't consider you then you might have to wait an entire year you know around that and he had the realization he said you know he says i'm not chasing anymore he says i'm actually going to withdraw my name from from it he says it doesn't really matter anymore the the benefits he had received from just stepping up and doing more with the community um, he says, I've gotten all the value out of that. Like my business is thriving. I've made friendships around the world. I'm speaking in conferences. I'm doing all these things that I always wanted to do. I watched from afar as others go and do that. And But there's an important lesson to be learned there that, um, you know, hey, you may never become an MVP. That That's okay. Mm -hmm. That the value you get out of giving back to the community, like you'll get value out of that and it's it's not always about you getting something out of it like yeah. i i love i mean the, being able to help solve a problem answer a question connect people together uh, I, mean, I feel validated i get uh, you know kind of a runner's high out of helping people whether or not i get recognized for providing that help if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should, shouldn't be a call itself to get an MVP award. I was doing blocking about, let's say, eight years before being awarded. So it can be a long road for someone, <laughs> especially yeah. someone like me, because uh, I did a eight years of blocking and answering questions on Stack Overflow for like six years or something like that, and doing videos and everything. So mm, it's all about just doing what you love to do and do it with good quality and try to improve your content all the time. So don't get used yeah. to that if you write a blog post that you are satisfied with it. You should always, you can always improve or get better writing blog posts or doing videos or whatever. So just keep on 
evolving and getting better. I think that is one good way to get into MVP program if you want to, because the quality of the content uh, helps you get more impact, helps you get more reach, makes you yeah. more more on the, the so people will know you better. Yeah. Well, Pato, really uh, appreciate you connecting and great to meet you. Hopefully we'll see you at the MVP summit next spring. If that's something that you're going to try and make it out to, I know it's a long way and it's expensive travel, but as I say to all new MVPs, like it is the best part of the MVP uh, uh, reward, uh, you know, award package is being able to spend a week with the product teams and, and your fellow MVPs from around the world. Um, so hopefully see you there. But for folks that want to get in touch with you, reach out, where are you most active in social? Where can people find you? Mm, LinkedIn, you can find me with the Panoxala name or from Twitter or X or whatever is called when this is coming out. So my name is there also Panoxala. And then of course my blog, which is oxala.net. There is a lot of content there and about the MV, MVP summit, of course, I will try to get there, even though that I hate flying, I hate airports, I mm. hate everything that is related to the flying, but still, yeah. I think it's going to be worth it because everyone is saying that it's an epic thing. So definitely I'm coming in there. Well, if you start now, um, the slow boat will make it there by that time. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have a camping van, so maybe I can drive there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. I'm waiting for that tunnel to be constructed between Europe and uh, and the east coast of the U.S. It'll be so much more convenient when that's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah it will help <laughs> a lot. So, well, I really appreciate your time, and of course, I'll have all of uh, Panu's links and data out on the blog post and on YouTube and uh, and shared via social. So, thanks so much, and hopefully, we'll see you soon. Yeah, thank you for having me and have a good autumn for you and all the listeners.